Hey, David here again. So we're uh, getting to go out for another flight today, and hopefully I want to show you a little bit of an update on the slow stick with the carbon fiber aero shafts, as well as a little bit about the OSD that I'm using, which is called the Q-Lite OSD. A couple of things about the OSD is, uh, this is something that I developed a couple of years ago. Um, it, it works perfectly with the original V1 and V2 DJI, FPV goggles. As an update, uh, you can go see my video on how to build it and a little bit of the background. Well, I've also had some other professional YouTubers uh, review it and build it, including uh, Painless360 in the UK and Andrew Newton down in Australia, which did some really good videos on it. And you can check their videos out in the links below. Unfortunately, there isn't a way to film the OSD or record it in the goggles, DJI didn't support the on-screen display um, in the recording or even the telemetry data. However, you do get to see it. Um, you can uh, get to see it and record it if you do the hack that, uh, that you can go research. I haven't done it yet and I just always wanted to keep mine standard to help people that were going to use the OSD because uh, I believe most people probably are not going to hack their goggles but I may eventually give that a try because it looks really promising. So we got the OSD up, I've got 12 satellites at all, the max it shows is 12 satellites. Anyway we're going to go ahead and take it up. We've got a little bit of a tailwind here. Okay. A little windier than I like. Hopefully it won't be too much. So I have my arm switch switch set to the PWM, which allows to send the arm signal to the DJI unit, which uh, starts at recording. Uh, the default behavior for the OSD is to do it when there's a change of uh, 1.5 meters, which is about five feet uh, difference in the altitude change. And you can do that, you can arm it by holding it over your head or, or just when you take off. All right. So the arming sequence also puts in the start of the GPS logging and the, we use the ESP8266, which is part of the Wemos D1 mini board, on the OSD. It's the processor, the memory, and the Wi-Fi unit uh, that also does the logging for us. So um, we're logging the minimal amount of data, and then when you export it, it comes out into an XML file, which can be read by any standard reader on like your iPhone or your your uh, Android device or even your computer using Google Earth Pro or you just load the file in there and you can watch the trace and see where over the lay it over the maps and it's kind of cool um, I'll show a little bit of that in here and and uh, for this flight and give you an idea man I wish it wasn't so windy I've mentioned this before, I like to use the 4 by 3 aspect ratio uh, when flying because it gives me more data in the vertical um, scene for both 
to see more down below and a little bit more up above. Um, in editing, you could do the 16, the standard 16 by 9, um, and just take the section of the screen that you want, and that's fine. But also, what it does is it gives me a little in the black bars that show up on the left and the right. Um, I actually lay my OSD information there, and it's easy to read over the black background, um, and it's very enjoyable. So here on the bench um, is the slow stick with the carbon fiber aero shafts and the landing gear and the 3D printed parts. Um, but one of the things I want to focus on a little bit is the, the Q-Lite OSD. And this is the, um, feeds me the telemetry information onto my video display. So just some basics about the Q-Lite OSD and common questions is the Q-Lite OSD is a kit and it comes that you must assemble. Um, so this isn't for everybody, but um, I don't assemble these for people unless uh, they pay me for my extra time. It, they're not difficult to assemble. This is how it comes in a package. There's a link to an assembly video and configuration uh, and how to load the firmware. Um, the components you get, We'll build everything, including the switch, the resistors for reading the voltage, and a couple of things like that. So you get the wires, all the things that lay out here, the, the voltage step down that reduces your flight pack battery down to the voltage that'll power the, the Wemos D1 Mini here. A lot of the new ones are, are shipping with uh, USB-C support. Some of them have the micro USB as well. Get the BMP 280 in there. That's your barometer that gives you your altitude. You get the resistors for the voltage divider that helps us read uh, the voltage of your flight pack to feed it to the on-screen display as well as their, the GPS support is provided by the pins here that is a standard send and receive. There's another video on how to assemble it. I won't go over that here, but just wanted to give you an update that that's what comes as part of the Q-Lite OSD that you can assemble quite easily in probably 15-20 minutes of a little bit of soldering and then loading the firmware. Um, you don't have to be a developer, but you can download the binary, follow the PDF instructions, and you can load the firmware, the, the board. If for some reason the board gets fried, um, these are fairly easy to get. They're standard. This is the computer with the Wi-Fi built into it. You can replace it, reload your firmware, and add it back to the board if the board is not damaged. One of the features of the Q-Lite OSD is being able to log the telemetry information and the, about the flight. And you can look at it later back on your phone or on Google Earth or whatever application that reads the standard file format. To get access to that, we just simply power back up the video unit. This is the, the plug that goes to the camera. And if we leave that in, you can. You might want to put a fan on it to keep the, the air units uh, cool because it's going to be powered up during this time. Or you can just simply unplug the camera, the camera and Vista unit during this part. So you can see that there's a blue light flashing. 
and that's indicating that the Q light OSD is in operation. It's a, a steady, slow flash. Um, now we've added a button. This is a momentary button. If you press and hold this button for three seconds, it'll change to a solid blue, which means it'll be an access point. And then you can join your phone or a network device to it. Right here, it shows up in my phone as QLight OSD with the serial number of the chip. I'm going to join that network and the password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the default one that's in the password. It's required to operate a, uh, in the code for a, a hotspot. So it's obtaining an IP address, connected, no internet access, which is expected. Um, we will then be able to pull up a web page. We're going to tell it, yes, stay connected. So we are connected to it. So to access it, we just start typing in, in the browser, uh, the IP address. So QLight OSD remembered that from previous visits here. But that's the IP, 192.168.4.1. That's the IP address that is given to this device as it is the hotspot. So I'm going to access the web interface. And right there, we see the log files. And uh, you can see by date. And it keeps a, record, a rolling record of the last 10 flights. That's to prevent it from overfilling the memory on the limited space that's on the device. So at this point, we can download the flight that we did from today. And we can open it and choose what application to view it in. So in this point, we're going to go ahead and open it in GeoTracker on Android. And from here, we can look at the different flights that we have done today. So that is the flight from today. What's cool here is we can then also look at some uh, statistics data which shows um, our speed and, and our altitude over time and uh, that information. So at this point, you can just unpower the QLight OSD. And next time you plug it in, it'll go right back into standard mode for logging. Don't forget to reconnect the camera correctly. And that's it. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the QLight OSD and the slow sticks. And just get out there and fly.